All right, we made it back to our second video of the 79 C10 here. On this one, we'll be cleaning up under the hood and eventually we'll get it back to the other shot and get the motor back in it. But what we're gonna start off with doing, you see this top rail, this radiator support, what we're gonna be doing is sanding all down to bare metal like we've done right there. Just cause this thing's got like, starting to get little pits in it and uh, it's just rough. And then, I mean, it's 40 year old paint, so it's time to refreshing it cross member or cradle up here all of our suspension up front if you've seen the last video yeah from where we we, we sprayed it down i'm surprised it's 95 percent of that stuff all the all the caked on grease and it come off we just had to end up scraping the rest off so it was it worked out good I mean, we're going to get back to this and get this sanded and get it in primer like the rest of the black The last thing y'all seen was this radiator support getting primed right here. And uh, since then, I've went ahead and sanded it and got it ready to paint. And uh, sanded it out with. I, I knocked the top off of 220 and went back 320 <clears throat> and then finished it off with of 400. So. All right, we went our process of starting to tape this up. We decided it'd been just as easy just to end up taking these fenders off. That way when we paint it, we'll have more room. And then when we uh, jam the inside of these fenders again, it will give us a cleaner finish on them. You won't see any paint lines or- uh, It'll also just be a whole lot easier to, to cover. You'll get full coverage on this instead of, you know, half new paint, half old paint. And uh, when we go to put the motor back in it, where there's two bolts on the support here come out, it'll, it'll come out and then we can just set the motor back in and it'll save us probably picking it up a foot and a half so that also keeps us from scratching the top of this radiator support or anything like that too so anyway we're gonna get these fenders off and still plan on getting this black spray today so we'll get back to it got the front end off we end up taking the radiator support off now just it'd be easier to paint it you get all of this and you can spray that off easier than you can with it sitting on here this is what not what we intended to do it at first we were going to leave everything on here and paint it but yeah we was going to leave the front cap on here but we kind of got carried away but like we said earlier if you take all that off you you get a cleaner finish in the end there's no oh, hard yeah. lines there's no and it's going to be a whole lot easier spraying this frame and the back of that radiator support mm -hmm. and it also be easier when we go to put the motor back in it yeah you don't have to go up this high we can just go straight in we don't have to worry about 
messing anything up we just painted that way uh, it'll also make it a lot easier painting this firewall and everything mm -hmm. too so yeah. overall i think it was the right way to go yeah probably should have done it before we pulled the motor out would have made it a little bit easier but yeah, oh well you live and you learn that's just part of it anyway we're gonna get this thing in the paint booth now and probably spray it tomorrow so we'll see you then Got our fenders prepped as well as the hood. You see our primer spots on here. All we done with that, there was some surface rust on the fenders. Yeah, this is where the battery tray was sitting. So all that battery acid, that's, there's a little surface rust there. That's pretty that, normal. Yeah. Um, for the year of this truck, it's actually got pretty solid fenders in it. Probably one of the most solid trucks we've seen of this body style. The round eye, the 73 to nine. Anyway, going over the hood here. Um, see, we have one pot of primer right here. That's actually where the hood, when it was bent, well, you shut the hood. These hoods are known to bow with the middle. Had a small crack. We ended up tacking it back and uh, smoothing it down, getting some primer on it. But other than that, I'm about to get these in the paint booth and get some paint mixed. shop with the 79 C10 Bonanza after a kind of longer time in the body shop than we expected originally 
So you seen us earlier, we done the fenders, the bottom of the hood, painted the frame here. Everything was going good until we pulled this windshield out. And as you can expect, these trucks are known to rust around the bottom of the windshield in this cow. So what happened was we had to replace the windshield anyway because it had a giant crack over here. The whole thing was scratched up. You couldn't really see that good out of it. So we pulled the windshield knowing there's stuff here because when we first bought this truck there was primer and some other stuff just some sort of rust kill caked up on here yeah we knew there was something here we just didn't know to what extent it yeah, was to what extent it was going to be so i'll we'll, we'll drop some pictures in here of what it looked like but when we first pulled it off i just took a pair of channel locks and pulled it out there's a lot of yeah uh, we we pulled this windshield out this whole tray right here was basically non-existent for the yeah, most part this this ended up being the worst side over here that side was still bad but it just wasn't as bad as this side so i pulled a bunch of chicken wire, chicken wire and bondo fiberglass everything out of it that i don't know how long it'd been there so we get all that out um that was before i knew it was all down through here i thought it was just up here at that point i pull all that out I take a roll lock and go over all this thing, take it down to metal, and then it ends up being from pretty much here all the way over down the whole sides. Everything besides this middle. Yeah, the middle piece. This middle piece right here. Pretty much had to touch, so yeah, it's kind of disgusted at the time, but you, you got to expect that working on an older truck or any older vehicle at all. I mean, this truck is what? 40. 42 years old. Yeah. They didn't make, I mean, the metal back then ain't like it is today. So we get all that knocked out. We get it, we done it right. We didn't just fill this thing back up with bond. Yeah, we, we could have, we could have just set this windshield up here and just went to smearing, went to town. We could have. We could several, have, but. I mean, a lot of people would do that, but. Or uh, a lot of people may just decide this cab wasn't worth fixing, you know. Could have been, but we, we done it the right way. We cut all this out, welded metal back in, went on top of that, primed it. Got it painted along with the firewall, which we ended up taking the, this brake booster off, or not brake booster, AC box. Left the brake booster on there. Um, you see those, they're, they're not new. We just resprayed them with that uh, spray paint they've got in the can for that. Redone this air box. This is the air box that come on the truck. I'm assuming it's the original one. We cleaned it up, resprayed. So, just to clear on it to bring the shine back out on it just to preserve it just to preserve it this truck's gonna have vintage air eventually so yeah it's really not gonna matter but other than that and you see on the firewall i don't know if it'll show on camera but as far as i'm saying the firewall and the cow if, you, if you're not if anybody's confused okay well the firewall it's all base clear the firewall though has just straight clear on it shiny Nothing clear shiny straight clear and from up here back up into here is got a uh, flattener in it which makes it not as shine as much I'm trying to um, somewhat mimic kind of mimic what's on it yeah but after doing this there's no way to get this color <laughs> on the rest of this truck without painting the whole truck or that fog on this the whole color well to get it to match see, perfect show that side where yeah. it's buffed you can see a little color difference right there if this truck had a repaint sometime i have no idea when but it had a repaint back in the day and who's to say they didn't paint it back the factory color exactly it could be it could have been a little darker could be a little darker i mean and that paint's going to fade different than what a factory paint will so other than that what's going to end up happening is to get that color which i like that color better than the one that's the truck buff so we're going to end up fogging the whole truck when we go back and do the interior do all the inside we'll have it gutted we'll run in here and try to preserve as much as what's on it as far as the dents and stuff it's going to be a patina truck still but it's going to be all refog to match this it'll of, it'll be this color it'll be the brighter the brighter yellow yellow instead of the more like a dull this is all chalky too yeah we're about to put this motor back in yeah the plan is to get this thing back running and driving under its own power 
That way we ain't just gotta keep pushing it around whenever it goes back to the body shop. For yeah, uh, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get the motor trans back in it, get the front end back on it, the hood, and then gut the interior, take it down there, redo the whole inside, and then spray the body. Yeah, the so, the whole inside will be this shiny clear right here. Probably the jams and stuff like that, and then the. Didn't mention it to you, but. We sprayed the uh, firewall. We sprayed all the under the side of the cab with a like a, it'd be an undercoating. Undercoating that'll just if it gets dirt on it, you can wash it off. Which I'm not building this truck to sit around and look at. I'm gonna build it and drive it. Yeah. So I ain't gonna. I don't want to make it just stupid nice slick or not nice. It's gonna be nice. I don't wanna make it stupid slick and then be afraid to drive it. Like kind of like. Like that that one right there. It, was... it don't get drove as much as it needs to, but. No. Anyway, we'll get this motor with a transmission, throw some time lapse in of us putting that thing back together, and then we're going to get ready to set this thing in here. As you've seen there, we got the motor transmission set in here. Everything went as it should, went in fine. Even though that being a slightly newer motor than that one was, everything everything went on as it should. And as far as the color of this motor, I know on that camera, it seems to glow. Yeah, almost. it seems to glow and look more like a Ford Blue, but I can promise you this is not a Ford Blue motor. Definitely not Ford Blue in person. It's got more of a, a GM bluish green cast to it. Yeah. And see what happens to these motors when they fade. They get hot and fade over time. They fade more like a bluish green, like a turquoise kind of. Turquoise type, yeah, look color. Really. But that's that's what it looks like new. So I think it looks good. I think it complements all these other colors up here with black and that firewall. So I'm happy with how it turned out so far. But um, I don't think we explained in our other videos, we might have, I don't, I can't remember, but how we got to this point or why we have took this truck down this far was that motor, we kept breaking a, we broke both starter bolts in that motor, which when we, when we got it, it had one broke. We kind of patched it up just to get this truck, just keep it running, driving. Keep it on the road. Movable. We'd fix it. It lasts about a week or so. About a good solid 10, 15 starts. Something like that. And then uh, it breaks, so we fix it again. We end up retapping both, putting bigger bolts in both holes. We thought we'd fix the problem. And so I believe when we done that, we drove it to put gas in it one time, and then we cut it off. It and cranked back, and then the next time we parked it here, it didn't crank back. So that was, we looked out there. And Big time. On that one. So we were one one, crank, one crank away, away from, from being stranded at the gas station. This thing home. So at that point, we just said, you know, we're not using that motor. We had this other motor sitting here with, I'm assuming this one's got roughly 30,000-ish miles on it. Now I had no idea how many that one has on it. And so we just said, you know, let's do this. And we're going to do it. It's kind of snowballed into this. So I'm, I'm glad it did, though. I, I like it turning out like this. There's something else we mentioned about this motor, too. These valve covers, we're not going to be running these. These are just, we just used these because they were on it, painted them with it. So we're going to have to tape all that up. And 
to use when we set this motor here so we wouldn't mess them up and you can yeah the valve covers we're running here are the billet specialties script valve covers there just got the uh milled chevrolet in them we painted them the same color matched the motor and took and traced out the black in there so they'd kind of pop a little bit better so It's another reason we ran these just to clean all this up. Have a better look to it. It's gonna look a whole lot. Another better, thing I, I debated about was to clean it all up. Was these firewalls have the black? Um, I don't know what it's called. It's like it's a tar rubberized coating of some sort to hide those lines. Well, to keep those lines from anything leaking out of them, and I. I was gonna put them back on there, but after I got it painted, I couldn't do it. I just I, it just looked too good. Yeah, it looked it looked too bright not to do it to have those valve covers on there, which I'm kind of going for a still a, stock, a, but yeah, factory stock look, but you can still tell you know it's something's been done to it. It's still a little still kind of custom. Yeah, got them both on there. You can see. I think it looks. 10 times better. I think the, the valve covers help it just as much as slicking the firewall out like that. Oh yeah. And as far as these holes here, you know, I'm gonna probably have a PCV back there in the back and have the oil fill right there. So, like I said, these came from billet specialties, you know. I'm gonna have their PCV breather in the back and their billet oil fill right there, cap. So. But other than that, um, We'll do a project update sometime of all the other stuff in here. Just just doing that. This may end up being a shorter video. We just want to do one, set this motor in here, get an update on it. After this one, well, you check our other videos out, her future videos. But we appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.